Welcome to the Next Level Human Podcast. As a human, you have a job to do. In fact, you have four jobs. To earn and manage money, to attain and maintain health and fitness, to build and sustain personal relationships, to find meaning and make a difference. None of these jobs are taught in school, and that is what this podcast is designed to do. To educate us all on living our most fulfilled lives through the mastery of these four jobs. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Tita, and I believe we are here living this life for three reasons and three reasons only to learn, to teach, and to love. In this podcast, I will be learning, teaching, and loving right along with you. I'm grateful to have your company. Here's to our next level. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show uh, today. Appreciate you being here. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I get asked an awful lot about. I've done a ton of other podcasts, as many of you know, and I oftentimes get asked to talk on various subjects. And more and more, I am talking on the next level human philosophical and psychological constructs that I have come up with. And this has been uh, something I've been doing for the last several years, even more than the metabolism stuff. And obviously, as you know, as a listener to this podcast and someone who follows me on uh, maybe the social media profiles, I do much more of that work now out in public versus the metabolism stuff, which I now do with Metabolic Living, and it's sort of a separate company. But one of the key aspects of the Next Level Human work is something that I've talked about quite a bit on other podcasts, but not yet on this one. And this is the idea of the six powers. The six powers uh, really underlie the entire next level human framework. If you ask the question, how do I become a next level human? I would tell you that there are six key superpowers that you must master in order to become the next level human version of yourself. These things are non-negotiable. In my study of successful individuals, in my study of some of the um, most uh, heroic humans that have walked the earth, people like Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela, Gandhi and others, in my study of these individuals, what I saw was that they had certain traits, that they had to master certain elements. I've also, in my work with professional athletes, in my work with uh, successful CEOs and entrepreneurs, I've also seen these same patterns repeated again and again. And about 10 years or so ago, I really started delving very deeply into this work to try to understand what makes somebody uh, be successful in the um, mastery of their purpose and be effective in putting that out into the world in a way that makes a difference, helps them grow themselves and evolve others. And I came up with these six powers, and we're going to discuss them in this episode. I've done other episodes with other podcasts where I've discussed this, but perhaps my favorite um, was with Luca Hosevar and his uh, podcast. And I don't know how many of you know um, Luca. He is a... Um, exercise and performance coach who uh, basically does a ton in the realm of health and fitness. And he has a podcast called The Vigor Life Podcast. And I was on this particular podcast and I really, really loved the conversation um, that I had with him. And so one of the things you can do is go over to The Vigor Life uh, Vigor Life Podcast with Luca Hosovar and search for Uh, the episode with me, and you'll get more of this six powers uh, concept. But I'm going to cover the basics for you uh, now. This is actually pretty easy because it goes by an acronym, and most of the things I do go by an acronym, but this goes by the POWERS acronym, P-O-W-E-R-S. And when you think about this acronym, which I'll break down for you uh, here all at once, and then we'll go through them one by one. But when you think about this, you want to kind of think about this in a stepwise hero's 
journey. And so certain aspects of these superpowers are actually elicited uh, when you travel your own hero's journey. And they kind of go in stepwise fashion, meaning that you have to sort of master the first one before you move on uh, to the next one. And so the acronym goes like this. Powers, the acronym stands for perception, O for ownership, W for wisdom, E for engagement, R for resolve, and S for sharing. And so as humans who are sort of on this mission, obviously, if you listen to this podcast, you know that it is a mix of mindset, muscle, and metabolism. But you also know that the whole point of this is really mastery of these four jobs. You hear about these four jobs every time you listen to this podcast, how to attain and maintain health and fitness, how to earn and manage money, how to give and receive love, and how to uh, uh, find meaning and sort of make a difference. It's basically wealth, health, personal relationships, and personal development. Well, in each of these four jobs, these six powers make themselves known, and you have to sort of go through this powers acronym inside the mastery of each of these four jobs. And so this is how the six powers sort of overlays uh, the four jobs. In each of these jobs, as you begin to level up in health, you have to walk through the six powers. If you want to level up in wealth, you have to walk through these six powers. If you want to level up in personal relationships, you have to walk through these six powers. And if you want to find meaning and make a difference, making a difference being living your purpose, you have to walk through these six powers. And so this is very important. So let's go through these one by one so you can get a sense of what we're up against. Perception is perhaps the most important. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Matrix, this is one of my favorite movies. But in this movie, uh, it starts out with the hero, Neo, living in um, the world. And he's going about the world and he's thinking something is wrong with this world. Something simply does not feel right. He feels like sometimes he can't tell the difference between when he's in a dream state and when he's in the real state. And what ends up happening is he realizes that his world, the world he is living in, is actually a dream state. It is a simulated alter reality. And he has got to change his perception and be able to see different and trust what he is seeing to escape the matrix and to realize his power inside of the matrix. And in a sense, this is what we're all trying to do. We humans live stories. We don't even realize it. We live into stories and labels and boxes that we put ourselves in, that other people define for us, that sometimes we never question. And if you're going to change uh, yourself and level up and grow, you need to break through these perceptions. Let me give you just a simple example here. Here in the Western world, many children grow up believing in Santa Claus. This is a perception. This is a story that we are essentially told about this man living in this Arctic, you know, sort of up in Antarctica and wearing this suit and owning reindeers and he passes out presents to all the kids that are good and he knows if you've been naughty or nice and there's this whole mythology around St. Nicholas and Santa Claus. And when you're a child and you're told this story, you essentially believe it, hook, line, and sinker, don't you? And so this becomes your perception, this becomes a story you accept and live into. You might even behave particular ways as a result of believing in this story, leaving cookies for Santa Claus on Christmas, trying to be good so Santa Claus likes you, writing letters, asking your parents about Santa Claus, and all of these things. And so all of a sudden, this becomes part of your perception and part of your reality. Now, what happens is usually at some point, we are told that this story is not true, or we figure it out ourselves. I would ask you, did you figure out yourself that Santa Claus was not real, or did you have to be told that Santa Claus was not real? And how much did you resist the realization that Santa Claus is not real? Well, if you understand this dilemma, then you can understand very clearly what perception is, how powerful it can be, even if it is inaccurate, and then what happens when that perception falls away and all the possibilities that open up. I'm sure there's not many adults here that are too upset 
um, that Santa Claus doesn't exist uh, anymore and that would try to, uh, you know, continue to believe Santa Claus exists. That story no longer works for you and is no longer important for you. But there are other stories that are, for example, that people with money perhaps are bad people and greedy and just take advantage or uh, that uh, religion um, and uh, it, there's a particular God and a particular way of looking at things that that might be useful or not, or maybe the reverse of that, that there is no God, or maybe sense of being smart or not so smart, or a sense of being worthy or not so worthy, or a sense of the world being safe or not so safe. These are all seed stories, all stories that we uh, basically inherit from our culture and from our early influences, and we either continue believing them or not, and they can keep us very stuck. Let's imagine that we grow up with an abusive father, and as a result of having this abusive father, we tend to believe that all men are bad, whether consciously or unconsciously, and that we have to be on guard with men in general, right? This would be a perception shift that we have to get out of. Now, perception is a really interesting one, and perhaps the most important one is because although we know we need to change our perception to ever grow, we are constantly kept from true perceptual reality by distractions and delusions. Distractions and delusions keep us from knowing the truth of ourselves and the truth of our world. So accurate perception, what we're trying to master is we're trying to understand the reality of ourselves and the world and how those two things merge. Whether we believe that the world is safe or dangerous, whether we are smart or ignorant and all, everything else in between. And distraction and delusion is actually the cause to keep us stuck in our old stories. Distraction would be the idea that we're just ch chasing culture level things like popularity and pleasure and consuming, uh, you know, particular books and news and media and entertainment. We oftentimes consume things and distract ourselves from truth so that we can remain in a safe, stable, non-questioning environment. In fact, most people, are looked down upon if they question. But if you're ever going to escape the matrix, so to speak, and master perception, you're going to need to learn how to escape distraction. One of the things, best ways to alter perception is to read and to learn. But you have to do it in a way that is not reading and learning only the opinions you want to believe, but everybody's opinion. In other words, to escape perception, you have to develop this, this idea that the answer lies somewhere in the gray. You have to be fanatical about reading a particular thing, perhaps believing that thing, and then going, I need to read something else because believing this particular thing just on the merits of all that I've been exposed to could mean I haven't been exposed to everything there is to expose, to be exposed to. In perception, we have to realize there are things we know we know, there are things we know we don't know, and there are things we don't know we don't know. And the vast majority of information are things we don't know we don't know. And so to master perception, we need to be out in the world exploring, uh, guarding ourselves against distraction from the outside world and delusion from our inside stories and looking for new stories, new evidence, new ways of being. We have to live into being very different when we try to change our perception. And this is where that saying of uh, this idea that fake it until you make it, it's more be it until you see it. That's a perception change. This idea that everything happens for a reason we can change that to say, no, things happen and you make a, a reason. This is a perception change. And so when you're working on perception, it's really taking all the stories you've been living into and questioning them. Am I really not smart? Am I really not capable? Am I really not worthy? Where is the evidence for this? What does the evidence say on the contrary? What kind of things am I consuming? Am I simply developing an opinion and going out and getting information that furthers my opinion? Or am I fanatical about finding all the information and coming to a new opinion based on that? This is the idea of perception, understanding truth. 
The Latin for this, which I have tattooed on my body because I have all six powers tattooed on my body, would be virum videre, seek the truth. Ultimately, and look for the truth. And ultimately, we must actually look for the truth. And so part of it is playing a little bit of a game. One of the games I play is that if anyone says, Jade, have you checked this out? This movie, this documentary, this book, this idea, have you heard of this? If that comes up for me two, three times, I begin searching that down because I just say to myself, kind of magical thinking, which we do, and this is also a delusional state, but does it work for me or or not? I try to uh, basically create uh, belief systems around finding information. And so while I don't think the universe or God or anyone is placing this information in my path, it's simply a game I play that if it happens and is mentioned to me two or three times, I go and look it up. So the first idea here is perception. Now, the most important piece of perception is really all about Uh, this idea of pain. We know through psychology research that uh, the most important things that you can do for success in life is not whether you have IQ or uh, intellectual, uh, you know, capacity or emotional intelligence or social intelligence. It's more these three things, your belief in yourself, the belief others have in you, and your ability to see pain fear, and failure as an opportunity to grow. Those are the three things that make the biggest difference in us getting where we need to get. And those three things are belief in ourselves, the belief that other people have in us, and our ability to take fears, failures, and pain and turn them into growth opportunities are all about the mastery of perception. Now, once we master this perception, once we start to master this new way of seeing and seeing the world accurately, it automatically brings us to ownership. And ownership is basically radical responsibility or extreme ownership. It essentially says, if I want to be a thing, then I have to own that thing. If I want to be a thing, I have to own everything that has happened to me in the past. For example, perception and ownership go together. Think about it. Your people that you were exposed to, the superpowers, talents that you have, the pain that you have endured, the passions and interests that you have been exposed to, all of these things are, uh, you know, sort of your personality and your deep perspective. All of these things are your ability to influence or influence your ability to see accurately and have perception and also make up who you could become in the world. So once you start seeing these things for what they are, learning opportunities, then you're in a position after mastering perception and seeing the world accurately to know what it is that you want to do with yourself and how you want to show up in the world. This is the ownership piece. This is a declaration. We do this in the work with Next Level Human, my work, by something I came up with called the Honor Code. I've done a whole episode on this. The Honor Code really is the writing down, the owning of your personal mission in life and how you want to show up. And the realization that everything that happens in life, if it's, if it's in your sphere of awareness and you want to do something about it, it is yours to deal with, not someone else's. And so perception leads in to ownership. Who is it that I will become now? And how will I define my life in terms of values? Go and listen to the ownership uh, honor code, uh, you know, sort of episode that I did with Next Level Human to understand this. Now what happens is once you've got perception and ownership, it opens up a gap. You have your perception, you're seeing accurately, you're starting to get a glimpse of who you could become, you're starting to uh, realize that distraction and delusion are no longer impacting you, you're no longer, uh, you know, being driven by old seed stories. With ownership, you decide who you're going to be and how you're going to be, and then all of a sudden, you start to realize something. And perception helps you with this as well. You start to realize, well, if I want to become this thing, if I want to become this great entrepreneur or this healthy, fit person or um, find, you know, my perfect romantic relationship or mend my, my family, you know, sort of wounds and relationship with my mother or father or siblings or, uh, you know, find meaning and make a difference through purpose, then there's a lot of information I have to learn. There's a lot of things I don't know. I need 
new information. I need to learn that information and turn it into knowledge. I need to combine that knowledge with experience in the real world using this information. I need to turn that into wisdom. In other words, when I tried to make the, the, the sort of transition from just healing doctor to teacher and author, there was a lot I had to learn about how to write a book, how to market a book, how to get a book published, and all of these things. Wisdom was what I had to master. And so a lot happens in the wisdom arena. It took money. It took courses. It took reading. It took lectures. It took me hiring coaches. It took me hiring marketing professionals. It took me finding an agent. It took me finding a publisher. All of this was learning. And this is where a lot of the rubber meets the road here. So the POW of the six powers is perception, ownership, and wisdom. And this is the idea of the first escape sort of from your old stories into becoming what you actually want to become as it relates to these four jobs. Now, the next three, engagement, resolve, and sharing, essentially solidify this. It's simply a a matter of this. We all know what it's like to be given the information, but we also know that that information is not transformation. Just because we know the thing that we need to do, it doesn't mean we're going to go and do it. Engagement means choices and action. Resolve means fears and failures. In other words, once we change our perception, we claim what we're going to be, we begin learning what we need to know through perception, ownership, and wisdom, we then have to continually make the choices and take the actions in that direction. In a sense, we have to live our way into the answer. We have to be it until we see it. And this is what engagement is all about, making consistent choices in the direction that we want to go taking consistent actions as the person we now are. The be it until you see it type of thing. We basically have to engage in life fully of as this new person we are trying to become. Resolve essentially goes right along with engagement because what's going to happen when we make more choices and take more actions? We are probably going to run into more fears, more obstacles, right? And more frustrations and more failures. And again, this is where perception comes in because when we run into obstacles, we run into fears and we run into frustrations and failures, we need to be able to see them as learning opportunities. And this is what the shift in perception does for us. Once we see that, we realize that this is not going to be easy, that easy is earned. It takes time. And this is the superpower of resolve and resilience to get up every time, to face your fears every time, to resist the temptation to give up, to make the same choices again, to figure it out, to change, to tweak, to adjust. There's this idea in Stoic philosophy that the thing that stands in the way becomes the way. This is the idea of the obstacle is the way. And again, this is a huge perceptual shift, but resolve helps make it happen. And so inside of engagement, and resolve, I have a concept I call the fear PR. In, in health and fitness, in the world that I came from, before I ever went to medical school or became an author and a teacher in self-development, I was a personal trainer. And one of the things that we would do in training physically is we would always be going for PRs or personal records. A fear PR is you setting up these obstacles. It's not rise to the occasion, it's create the occasion. So you purposely expose your things to the the things that frustrate you, to the things you dislike, to the things that scare you, to uh, failures, so that you can rise to your level of training. This is essentially practice. Practice makes progress. This is where the fear PR comes in. And the fear PR is the perfect use of engagement plus resolve. Setting an intention. I am going to spend this kind of money on education and entrepreneurship. I am going to commit to 30 days of uh, taking out alcohol. These are forms of fear PRs. I am going to uh, put myself out and be more vulnerable in my relationship in the following ways. These are essentially fear PRs. They combine engagement and resolve. And or the most important thing and the thing that I am most passionate about helping others sort of understand is the idea of purpose. The fear PR is really saying, this is what I want to do with my life, ownership. 
But then the fear PR makes you prove it to yourself. It says, what do I need to understand to move forward? And it's really interesting because once you start engaging and falling flat on your face and getting back up, what ends up happening is you go right back to the beginning because what happens is oftentimes perception, perceptual shifts change as a result of these experiences. Oftentimes, the ownership, the honor code changes as a result of these experiences. In other words, these are a living, breathing thing. Your honor code is an evolution. And also what opens up is new opportunities for learning, new wisdom. And so there's this loop that happens once you start to engage, be in engagement and in resolve and start practicing these fear PRs, they push you right back to perception perception, ownership, wisdom, then engagement and resolve again, which changes your perception, which makes you own things a little differently, which opens up new things of learning, which makes you choose and act and also, uh, you know, sort of confront fears and failures until this loop happens enough time that you start to really become the thing. You start to own this new person who you are. You start to master these first five pieces of the six powers. And then comes the most important power, sharing. There's this saying that comes from the Christopher McCandless story, and I don't know how many of you know this, but in the, this is a guy who basically went out into the Alaska, Alaskan wilderness, shunned all of society, tried to live out there on his own, tragically died of starvation because he was ill-repaired, uh, prepared rather. And one of the last things he wrote in his journal when they found him uh, was, happiness not real unless shared. This is actually what we need to be thinking about purpose. Purpose is something that you give to the world. It's not something you get from the world. Passion and meaning are things you get from the world, but purpose is something you give. And so purpose, not real unless shared. In fact, purpose, not possible unless shared. So after you've lived this purpose, perception, ownership, wisdom, engagement, resolve, and you become the thing, and you've had success in health and fitness, or wealth, and or in relationships, or in purpose and meaning, it's time for you to teach the thing. This is ultimately what solidifies it, and this is how we pass on our legacy. Not legacy in an ego sense, legacy in the humble recognition that you are a unique spiritual fingerprint in the world, that you have signature strengths that make you have the ability to talk and teach and help certain people who may not be helped otherwise without you touching them. And this is where you have to essentially share all that you've learned, share your journey, either on an individual level or through social media or through books and podcasts and things like this. And this is when everything comes full circle. And so this is how the six powers interact with your journey as a next level human. So I'm going to end there today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Very quick cursory introduction to the six powers. You will hear more about the six powers in my work, and I'm probably going to do an individual uh, you know, sort of episode on each of these powers at some point. But since so many of you were asking about the six powers and what they are and how they relate to the next level human work, I wanted to do a podcast on this. Do me a favor, please check out my sponsors to the show, Cured Nutrition. Uh, This is the CBD products that I use. You can go over to Cured Nutrition, use the code next level for a discount, and Paleo Valley, a great company that does amazing protein-based Uh, grass-fed meat sticks that I use almost every single day for my protein sources. Also, use the code NEXTLEVEL. Please uh, check out those sponsors. It helps keep the show going. You get a discount. I get a little bit of a kickback, and they get a sale. It's a win-win-win for all of us. That's the kind of relationships I love. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Shoot me a DM on social media. Give me a review. I'd really appreciate it. I will talk to you guys at the next episode.